Welcome to the Road by Road Garden Show, the best daggum gardening show on the radio and the internet as well. Glad to have you this evening. It's beautiful here in the south. Warm days. And man, we love gardening this time mm -hmm. of year. All pumped up. Greenhouse is full. Full of your stuff. Full of my stuff. Yeah. <sighs> One pretty day and we all go haywire, don't we? Mm -hmm. It was a little cool though one night. It was, but it's warmed back it up. Warmed I actually up. moved a pallet out there on the outside of my greenhouse so I could push overload outside so I could plant some more stuff. No, I got, it's my turn. I got to plant some more stuff. So I'm on a roll here. More watermelons. Uh, uh, more yeah, watermelons. you had a little watermelon I had a little watermelon incident. Uh, tell you what happened. So I planted sangria watermelons, a yellow doll, and I wrapped them in my plastic like you know, we're supposed to do. And I texted my buddy and I said, how long do we leave him in there? He runs a big greenhouse. He said, two days. Cool. So I wrapped them, put them on a heat mat inside the shop because they don't need any light. And two days passed by and it was that afternoon I was supposed to cut the plastic off. A neighbor comes by, says, Greg, you want to go fish? It was beautiful outside. I was pretty much caught up with my chores. I said, why not? I said, those can wait till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Fishing's more important right now. Mm -hmm. So we went fishing. By the way, we didn't catch any fish. Yeah. Next day, I come up and start looking at my watermelons, and they've already sprouted and got leggy underneath the plastic just that quick. Overnight. Overnight. I think I can salvage most of the yellow dolls, but the two flats of sangrias, gone. Phew, you're going to have to throw them out and start over. Mm. The moral of the story there is don't let fishing get in the way of your garden. Mm -hmm. Especially right. when you don't catch any. No. So when we got things planted in the garden, we got things coming up. I got yeah. beets coming up. I've already planted squash. I planted some cucumbers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. You got uh, what? English peas. Yeah, man. We just got all kind of stuff. I'm getting cauliflower. Corn spot ready. One of my buddies already planted his corn. My potatoes in my root pouch are sprouting. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I need to get my corn planted in the next few days. Everything is just in that rush, rush mode right now. Exciting time Exciting of year. Exciting time of the year, springtime. Uh, we're going to be talking about okra. This mm -hmm. main segment is going to be talking about okra because this warm weather is making us think about okra. Not quite time yet, but we're going to be talking about okra today. Okra, okra, okra. Growing okra, eating okra, okra everything. How to take care of okra. Mm -hmm. At the end of the show, we're going to be drawing for our new beans. So let's hang around for that. We have got... Well, how many submissions we had? How many? Lots and Over lots. Over 300? Yes, yeah, submissions. And then also, for those that found the old goat last week, we had over 60 people they found the old that goat. found the old goat. He's still around this week, if you want to guess where he's at. Um, but I'm going to draw out of these 60 names for Hall's Hat at the end of the show, so stay tuned. Yep. And name of the new bean and drawing out a hat for the old goat. Mm -hmm. Boom. Also want to give a shout out to the Norman family. Mm -hmm. We had a good um, friend and loyal follower. Loyal viewer of um, River Show. His dream was to come here to the office and view the new tour the new warehouse and he didn't make it but mr buddy norman mm -hmm. um passed away last week and we want to give a shout out to his family yep. that we're really thinking about them and they're in our prayers Absolutely. he was 83 yep mr buddy was a card he was a card he served in the military for 20 years mm -hmm. and then he was a farmer and his favorite thing of ours was the bella rosa yep. tomato yep yeah, he's actually where you got one of your fig trees from. Yep, he is. So, blessings to that family. Yep. All right, so we got some new seeds. It's mm -hmm. always time for new seed alert. All right, first of all, let's talk about our lettuces. So, we've got them right here. Do we want to bring them yeah, over Yeah, bring here? them over here. Yeah. Here, I'll hold the packet. Okay. First one is... Red dragon. Red dragon. Look at that. It's an oak leaf lettuce. Beautiful. It's one of our new offerings right there. I, I think this one in conjunction with the next one is going to make a nice mix there. Some mm -hmm. people like these oak leaves. Some people like the romaines. I like to kind of mix it up. That is a pretty one there. Dark red burgundy color. Yep. And here's the sister lettuce. Mm -hmm. Would be green tiger. 
same exact lettuce just about except it's green so think about if you mix those two in a, a big lettuce bowl or salad mm -hmm. bowl yep. but you know they're really pretty i got them in a raised bed mm -hmm. and i alternated the colors mm -hmm. that's exactly what i would have done it's really yeah. pretty and then we wow. have it was in that same stack red tide well you get one over there no this is gray green tiger no, red tide. Oh, this is red tide, yeah. But this is a lot smoother. This is not an oak leaf, but look at there. Isn't that pretty? So look inside here. Mm -hmm. It's got the green mm -hmm. at the bottom and the red at the tip. Yep. So this will be fine by itself right there. Right there. Yep. So it's, you know, we're enjoying a lot of lettuces. We got a lot of lettuces growing this right is now. A, I, I ate some of this for lunch. It's got yep. a unique taste to mm -hmm. it. Very, Very good. good. And moving right along, we've got a new bean. Mr. Outlaw Bean there. Beans is starting to come in a little bit. We're getting some in this week. And uh, this is one that we've gotten in a couple weeks ago. This is a good bean right here. It's a newer variety right there. So if you can't get the one you've been planting for years and years due to a little seed storage there, Outlaw would be a good one to try. Next one right here is Mr. Glass Jim. Jim Corn. I've got some in that. Yep. Uh, if you've never seen this one before, you're just going to be blown away. It has very translucent kernels there. Some people call it a popcorn. It's actually a flint corn. It's a pretty novelty type corn to grow. You can make your cornmeal and grits out of it. Use it as an ornamental corn or pop it. Pop it. Pop, pop. And winter squash. Y'all all know I love winter squash. Speckled pup squash. This is a pretty one right here. You can turn that around so it's got yeah, a picture on it. Kind of. yeah, that, is a, that is a pretty one right That's there. a winter squash. Yep, winter squash. 85 days to maturity. So, plant you some. Special pup squash this spring. You set that back on the shelf so yeah. the shelf's not empty. So the shelf's not empty. You know, I don't know if everybody knows, so we kind of move these around every other week. So everybody gets a little different look there. And we hide certain things up there. We, we do. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we have yeah. an old goat hiding. Sometimes we have an old goat hiding up there. All right, so did you know I did a little research on okra? You did? I did. Okra originated in Ethiopia. Huh. North Africa. Come over on the shop on the ship horse flower. Okay. Close, okay. <laughs> we don't know how I got here. We assume it come over on the ship, but it did originate in Ethiopia, which I thought mm -hmm. was from it's it's a very and that tends to why it loves the heat. Uh, it came from so. somewhere hot. Yeah. Um, Natively. I love the flowers, and the bees love the flowers. Uh -huh. It's in the okra family. It's in the okra family. It's the in the mallow, mallow family. family. Yeah. Like the okra, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's what um, I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I seen it last year. A lot of people were using it in floor arrangements uh -huh. as a decorative piece. Uh -huh. I think Crowley House, um, I seen it in one oh, of the really? I would have never yeah. thought about that. But, the, you know, it is real similar to the hibiscus and the, and the cotton bloom. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. The hibiscus blooms got more pink in it. They use actually okra pod in the arrangements, not the flower. Oh, okra pod. Uh-huh. Hmm. The dried okra pod, yeah. Yep. And talk about nutrition. Now, one of the few things you may not know about okra is it's actually a good source of protein. Mm -hmm. Not yep. just fiber like other, other vegetables. It's not vegetable? a vegetable. That's a vegetable. Yeah. It's a fruit. It's like other fruits, but it's very high in protein. Mm -hmm. Most uh, vegetables and fruits do not have protein. Mm -hmm. It's also high in vitamin A, C, folate, which folate. is really good for um, I need some folate. pregnant women and magnesium. I'm not pregnant, by the way. You're not? No. You don't need a folate. Um, I have a magnesium deficiency, so I need to up my okra intake. You could take eat okra or drink magnesium sulfate then. Mm. Yeah, no. just eat the okra. I just eat the okra. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of antioxidants. Mm -hmm. You know what antioxidants are? They're things that make you make you good and healthy. Your heart and your brain yep. functions. Any, any time, you know, I'm just assuming this. I'm going out on a limb here. The red okras probably are higher in antioxidants than the green ones are. Usually red is. Usually red, purple, all those unusual mm -hmm. colors there. 
are boosted with antioxidants. So. And talk about ways to cook it. Mm, ways to cook it. Where, where can I go here? Okay. Number one, it's got to be fried. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mother loved fried okra. Uh, my mother's 84 years old, and she's had she's got Alzheimer's. She's in later stages of that. But boy, back in the day, she made me promise every year she would start talking in December how many rows of okra she wanted me to grow her. She'd either say one row or two rows. Mm -hmm. She knew about how long my rows was. She said, I either want one row or two rows, according to how she, <laughs> how she felt that winter. And uh, she would put her order in for that. And she says, you just grow it for me, and I'll mm -hmm. cut it. And she would come over here. Every morning. Every morning and cut half of it. And she'd come back the uh, next morning and cut the other half of it. Just every morning. You could see her. She wouldn't bother nobody. She got out of her car. She walked out there with her gloves and a little knife, and she went out there and she cut that okra. And then every Sunday she would cook it for lunch. Yep. Fried okra, she mm -hmm. knew how to do it. Now the secret, she told me this before she got, where she Don't couldn't start. tell her this. She said, the secret son, she called me son, is not to stir it and to flip it. She'd take her spatula or go underneath there and she would flip it one time and that was it. Mm -hmm. And she would batter it with cornmeal and flour Kind of a little combination mm -hmm. there. Oh, it was good. I it was good. A bowl Ooh, I wish today. I had some now. Another way, is the newer way some people go is sauteing. Mm -hmm. so we've had it that way. Mm -hmm. You can put it in there with some more vegetables. A, way, a new way, I cooked it last year, and don't hate me for the microwave, but you could just slice it up, no oil, anything, and put it in the microwave for a couple of minutes, and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Grilling. We actually yeah, grilled some grill last some. year. So this is what you do. Leave the pod whole. Of course, you want to wash it. Coat it with olive oil, a little sea salt, and we roasted the whole, I mean, mm -hmm. excuse me, grilled the whole pods. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. Yeah. Pickle. Pickled, yeah. And we pickle. all love pickled okra. Um, soups. I put it in my mm -hmm. soups. Stews, gumbos. Gumbos, yep. And, uh, and we, I've seen it freeze drive some freeze dried some of the youtubers that's got those fancy freeze drivers um do that well we put it up in the freezer before haven't we like cut it up yeah but that's different than freeze dry i know i'm just talking about preserving it haven't yeah haven't we cut it up and put it in the freezer before we we <laughs> we i think i've seen that <laughs> Now, I've only done that when I'm saving it to put in my soups. Like okay. When I'm gathering up stuff to make my soup in a big batch, I'll put them in the freezer until I get ready for them. Yep. Uh, normally speaking, I've only seen okra in two different colors, and that's the red and the green. And the red turns green when you cook it. So. Okra is an annual, so we... we now, if you live in one of those tropical areas, I'm not telling you you couldn't keep it from year to year because you possibly could. But and, and for all purposes speaking, it's an annual, so we have to replant it every year. Mm -hmm. And it does have a couple of pest problems, but we'll get into that. Grows best in hardiest, hardiness, I can't talk today, zone 6 to through 11. Mm -hmm. uh, zone 5 can grow it. Yeah, if they... I think y'all better off sticking to something else, though. Stick of something else, yeah, but they can if they start it and transplants. Yeah, it'd be tough. Yeah, to get to get as much out of it as we do, it, it, you might be better off if you're in zone five, just grow some winter squash. Mm -hmm. Just let us grow the okra. Takes fifty to sixty-five days mm -hmm. to mature. Mm -hmm. Loves the heat, loves the sunshine. It reminds me a lot of sweet potatoes. It's one of the few crops that's going to thrive in the middle of the summertime. If you wanted squaw, excuse me, if you wanted okra all through the growing season, which is very easy to do, you could start having uh, okra in June and have okra all the way to frost if you did maybe three different plants. Now sometimes mm -hmm. the, the first plant that you plant by fall time is going to start having some issues due to I, nematodes. Yeah, I had mine all the way to December. Mm -hmm. Yep. Plant you a new crop about every month, and I think you'd be fine. You can have okra all the way to uh, to frost. It's okay. a long time. It's a long time. What happens most times, we'll get tired of okra. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, ideal growing temperature, 75 to 90 degrees. As we say, it loves, loves the heat. That being said, germinating okra seed can be an issue for some of you all out there. Some of you have problems with that. We have this happen every year. People 
calling in or emailing in complaining about your okra seed, the first thing I say is, where do you live at and when did you plant it? If you plant okra too early in cool soils, it will not germinate. Will not germinate. Uh, it, sometimes it will be slower to germinate later on, but if it's in cool soils, it will just not come up. You waste your time. So don't jump the gun on planting okra. This is kind of the way I do it. My first planting of tomatoes in the greenhouse. When I get those coming off and I get those plants out of that first tray, I use that tray to plant my okra. Mm. And that's pretty good time. So you're still that. looking at four weeks? I could be looking at three. No, I don't know. I got some tomato plants really kicking it out of there. I probably, I, I could be two, I could be two weeks away from having tomato plants ready. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, I know what, I've kind of amazed mm. myself here. So germination yeah. can take five to 17 days? Yep. Yeah. And some people say soak it overnight. Mm -hmm. I actually tried that last year. I had some that I didn't soak, some that I soaked in buttermilk, and some that I soaked in water. And I could not tell any difference in the germination So you did speed. this control type mm -hmm. ex uh, experiment. An experiment. And you didn't tell, tell any difference. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the one that you didn't do anything, the control actually came up yeah. first, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'm not And it sure. could be it was the time of year. Yeah. It was, you know, middle of the summer. I don't think it made any difference mm -hmm. that time of year. Okay, so transplanting versus direct seed. Let's talk about that for a minute. All right. Now I'll tell you what works for us. Now you can you know where you live could be completely different from us, but I'm gonna tell you our experience and what works for us. My first growing of okra. I grew as a transplant in a greenhouse. Years ago, if you'd asked me that, I said, no, 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 we direct seed all okra. But we got where we transplant some of it, and that actually works pretty good. So you can get those seeds up in the greenhouse a little quicker than you can in that cool soils. You still don't want to transplant them out when it's cool, but I, my first go around, I transplant into the garden. After that, I'll direct seed them. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was researching, I read, and I actually had experience with it, that the root is very fat, fragile. It's called taproot on these okra plants. And I actually had some that didn't make it that I did aggravate the root system there. Have you ever had that? No. No. I don't, I don't agree don't, with that. You don't agree with I that? I don't agree with that. Okra seems to have a pretty good root system. Pretty, now, when I think about a tender plant, I think about watermelon or squash. Mm. I don't think about okra. It's a do very not tender. disturb that little root ball when you go to plant it. Well, I've never done it intentionally, but I've never. I mean, had, I didn't intentionally either. I've never had that I had two with... that just kind of fell apart, and those two didn't come up. I mean, oh. they kind of keeled over like transplant shock. Yeah. Something to note. I've never had that. Problem. Let us know if you've had that. I problem. just view okra as being a more tougher plant, I guess. When you transplant it, water it immediately. Yep, just like any transplant, you want to keep, get it nice and wet, get it going. Now, growing okra, you don't want to plant that in a low spot of your yard or your garden. You want it on the higher ground because it does not like wet feet. Mm -hmm. Likes it dry, likes it hot. So, now, for direct sowing, mm -hmm, I do use drip tape mm -hmm. because during the summertime, you, you can increase your production dramatically when it turns off dry. By shooting the water to it. Mm -hmm. How far apart? Two feet. Two feet apart two is feet. ideal. Two feet. Two, two feet apart. Two feet apart is ideal spacing for me for my okra plants. And I put it on every other emitter. Now you may say I wasted the water in that emitter that I'm skipping there. But what happens is your roots will grow into that. Roots are pretty massive on uh, mature okra plants. They'll grow into that and utilize that water. You may not start with when you first put them out. But they'll utilize it. And row spacing, how far apart your row room? spacing three to four feet, which we usually just have one row. Yeah, but you could do three to four feet if you really tight a room, go with three feet. If you got the extra room, go with the four feet. And you need plenty of room for the okra. Do not try to crowd it because it won't mm, do like, like we talk about sunflowers, it just won't do as well. Yeah, plenty of room. It gets up to six feet tall or taller. Some varieties, some varieties yeah. get taller than others. Now, normally speaking about an inch per week. But if you really want to pump out production that gets hot, you can shoot the water to it and do a little bit better than that. I was talking about how tall, six feet tall. Oh, six feet, excuse me, I got ahead of myself right there. <sighs> you thinking six inches of water? No, I'm thinking more I got left. <laughs> Woo. Woo, gone. <laughs>
If you're going to irrigate, if you if you're planning on irrigating, I would definitely do drip irrigation. If you have to do overhead irrigation, then you want to make sure you do it uh, early in the morning time or late afternoon. Location. Mm -hmm. You said on a high. Full sun. Full sun. Full sun. Don't like shade. I know you're tempted to put no over a place to the shade tree so that when you're out there cutting that okra, you can sit down there in the shade, but don't put it in the full sun. Yep. Fertilization. Uh, it's not a, It's not what I classify as a heavy feeder, but it has a long lifespan. So I would put something out there that I would... This is what I would do. I would incorporate the complete organic to start with. Then I would use my 20-20-20 with maybe some calcium nitrate, or you could either go with Chilean nitrate, either one. Alternate the, the two there, of course, with some micro boost. And you put out some good compost, too? If you got good compost, I always recommend putting out some good compost. But I'm not going to say it's a heavy feeder, but it would be a steady feeder. Yeah. How about that? Steady feeder. Steady feeder. Fish emulsion, if you got it. I'm not a big fan of putting fish emulsion through my drip tape. But if you want to put it in your sprayer and run down through there, mm -hmm. I've done it before. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pests and diseases. Tell me what your thoughts are on this. Um, You've grown okra and raised beds. Right. And the only problem I had was with ants. and But you told me ants was not the problem. The ants, it was the aphids. Ants, you thought were the problem, yeah. but ants really wasn't her problem. Her problem were aphids, and ants were feeding off of the aphids byproduct. Therefore, she had an aphid problem. Mm -hmm. So, correct the aphid problem, and the ants go away. Neem oil? Neem oil, anything. Anything can kill aphids, pretty much. Of course, BT is not going to kill aphids. Neem oil, horticulture oil would be my two go-tos there on that. And, and the ants go away. Now, if you got fire ants and a raised bed, something like that, use a fire ant bait. What about root knot nematodes? Root knot nematodes is horrible. I didn't have any of that. I've seen that up there in your garden have before. You? Yep, I've had it a lot. So anytime you have okra growing over a long period of time, you left it out there for a while, it gets to late summer, and it starts struggling a little bit, more likely you've got nematode problem. If you pull the root system up, you look at those knots on the root system there, and it's a microscopic pest. Now, I'll go a little deeper into that. Would you like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's actually, some people would classify it as an insect, but it's actually classified as a disease. But it is a living organism that causes that problem. It really didn't have any clear definition there, but if you talk to the professors at the university, they always class it under disease mm -hmm. category. And if you have it, you want to be sure not to plant your okra there the next year. Rotation is pretty much key on controlling root knot nematodes. Now, there may be a couple more options out there, but I don't know of a good option out there. You can do your biofumigate, which you, your, uh, your mustards would help with that, but rotation is going to be your best thing. I like cover crops, rotation, and using the mustards best. Monterey, which we buy a lot of stuff from, we sell the stuff actually make a nematode control. Mm. I have a lot of people ask me about this, and it works wonderful. We don't sell it. The reason why is it wipes out all nematodes. So if you even do the use, good ones. even the good ones, if you do use that product, it will work, and it works really well. But you're gonna have to reintroduce your good nematodes, and I feel like that's just more more than mm -hmm. most people want to do. What about powdery mildew? Powdery mildew can be an issue, not a large issue, but it can be an issue on those rainy, humid, humid days or, or even those hot humid days. It can be an issue there. Leaf wetness, most time, humidity is cause of that. Yeah, that's it, one reason you want to water from the bottom, not water the leaves. Yeah, it does help with that. It's not a huge issue for me, but it is an issue. As far as insects can grow, we talked about aphids. Aphids, you can, if you're going to grow okra, more likely at some point you're going to have aphid problem there. Don't sweat the aphids, anything, I'm not, take them out. Need more horticultural oil. Here's the biggie for me, stink bugs. Mm -hmm. You know, if you ever pick okra and it's got these little knots on there, that's mm -hmm. stink bug damage. Stink right. bugs can be tough on okra. So, and they can be hard to control too. You just have to pick them off. Pick them off or start early on and keep keep your control going. If they get ahead of you a little bit, before they you get really out of control, you can use Bug Buster okay. too, and it'll knock them down.
But it's, it's, to me, it's my worst problem. Okay, let's talk about seeds and papayas. What about harvesting? You gonna skip over that? I don't know. I'll let you talk about it. You probably harvest as much. I don't know. I don't really harvest yeah. okra more than you do, don't I? No, this last year you oh, did. Come on, Al. No. Um, some people really complain about the itching. Like they say they're allergic to it. Doesn't bother me at all. It's got little spiny things on. Mm -hmm. Just wear long sleeves, wear some gloves. There Don't are... go out there with a bunch of gloves on. Makes you look weak. Yeah. Long sleeves. Roll your sleeves, go out there and tough it up. Um, there are I some. I don't for that. You get the mute to it every period of time, but it doesn't bother me at all. It, it, some bothers me worse than others, but now there are some varieties out there. The spine ones. That, yeah. Um, you don't have quite that problem with. Check it daily. Okra is not something you can pick once a week. Nope. Nope. nope, nope. Um, actually, every other day, you need to stay on top of it. If you let it get too big, it gets woody. Um, it needs to be picked and tossed. Yep. Or use it for decorations. Yep. Um, do you snip it? Or snap it. Snip it or snap it. All right, if I've got plenty of moisture in the plant and the plant's not stressed, you can snap it. But if the plant is stressed or if it's hot or later in the day, you're going to need to snip it. We mean yeah, that I could. We got some of those good little knives mm -hmm. that works mm -hmm. well for that. I normally snip, but if it's young and it's growing and it's nice and healthy and full of moisture, you can snap. Snap. It depends on what I end up in the garden with when yep. I need to pick it. Yep. Um, can be stored in the fridge two, three days after you pick it. Mm. If it's after that, you can. I have just stuck the whole pot in the freezer. Um, didn't do anything to it until I got ready for it. Yep. All right, so we're going to go over the okra varieties here, and we're going to throw the product pictures as we go along there. Are you going to skip the seed saving? Well, we'll cover that in there. Oh, okay. Seed saving on okra, if they open pollinate, you can save the seeds. You just don't want to stay on task. I know. Today. I just, I'm jumping here. Yeah, I'm excited about these varieties we've got because we've got a couple of new ones here. And I want to get into that because I just love okra. These varieties here. Years ago, I say years ago, about four years ago, I grew about five of these varieties side by side, did a trial on, and it was uh, very exciting. Okay. And we're going to cover some of these that I trialed out. What's our first one? First one is Perkins Long Pot. All right, now this is an heirloom variety that you can save the seed on, okay? And it dates back to around 1800s. It has long pods, and it's a bright green color and tender up to five inches. For you people that don't want to cut okra every other day, you might let this one slide on you just a little bit and get by longer, and it'll have a tender pot. Plants are start production early and are often, not as often as sun, but this is a good standard variety you may want to plant and try. Okay. Clemson Spineless. Clemson Spineless. This is the one that's the most popular by all means. If you go to the hardware store, this is the one you're going to get if you ask for okra. It's a standard okra variety. It was an all-American selection back in the 1930s. There again, it's an open pollinator, so you can save the seed on this one if you want to. Pods can get up to seven to nine inches. All right. Star of David. This yep. one's pretty. It is. Now, I'm going to tell you about Star of David. This is probably not, if you're going to grow one okra, this is probably not the one okra you want to grow. But if you're thinking about growing an extra row, just kind of something different and unique, this is the one you should grow here. It's one of those real stubby varieties here. And it's, it's a lot fatter than our normal okra there. And it's an heirloom, so you can save the seeds. Save, the seeds have been passed down for generations on this one here. Mm -hmm. It's good for frying, and it has those short, thick pods. Mm -hmm. Cow horn. Oops, that's wrong one. Cow horn, yep, there we go. Now, this is the one folks out in Louisiana, you know, they talk about the gumbo. Mm -hmm. This is the one they like to use out there. It's an heirloom variety. There again, you can save seeds long, the, probably the longest. Ten inches. Parts. Yep. Wow. And it's an early producer, yet it stays tender. That's the biggest thing. It stays tender through a long pod. So if you're looking at getting a lot of okra off per pod, this may be the one this for you. It's good for market farmers. No. It's according to where you're at. If you mm -hmm. was out there, I think people out in Louisiana, Mississippi, maybe in Texas, are used to those longer pods. Uh, around here, you can't you can sell them. Yeah, usually around here, they see those long pods and they think they're... Tough and woody, which some of them, yeah. sometimes they are. Red berry. We grew this 
was it last year? Two years. Two years ago. Two years ago, I grew it. Red burgundy is it, now. This is a heirloom. Also, save the seeds off of it. Highly productive variety, and this has those deep red pods. Uh, you know, as far as pickling okra, this is my favorite. Mm. Now this stays tender at longer. It does, but not as long as some of the rest of them over there. You know, if you're doing a jar, like you do pickled in, these, these okra pods yeah. are very consistent. Mm -hmm. So Can as I far agree? as a pickling variety, that's my favorite there. Emerald Green. Emerald Green, there again, another heirloom introduced back in the 50s by the Campbell Soup Company. So if you're eating Campbell Soup, this is probably the variety you're eating at. Did you talk about the, the um, you were telling me about the, um, in Meg's. No, well, on Cairo. Cairo. So back in the day, uh, not far from where we live, they was a, they grew a lot of okra. It was known as the okra captain of the world. And Campbell Soup Company had a processing plant down there where they bought the okra and processed it for their soups. Yep, a lot of okra growing around Cairo, Georgia. All right. All right, this Jean Orange. This, is this a, we did grow last this, year. We did, this is a probably, this is an heirloom, but it's a newer variety here. This is an Asian heirloom of okra, and it has red to oranges pods that are spineless, and they stay tender up to six inches. Now, I'm on... I can't tell very little difference between that and red burger. I don't yeah. know if I can tell any difference between the two. If you've grown them before and you can tell a difference, comment below and let us know. They was very, very, there's not enough difference there between the two for me to, to distinguish. Next one, this is really not okra, right? But you threw it in there anyway, didn't you? Well, it was on our website, it's in our Yeah, we'll okra. talk about it, yeah. Okay. Chinese okra, which is actually a loofah, and we grew this last year, and we like it, matter of fact, and we cut it up and eat it like okra, and it tastes real similar. If you didn't know no better, and you fried it, I don't know that you could tell right. the difference. if you cook it them. young. Yeah, you pick it long, but it's actually a loofah. Pick it young and cut it up and fry it. Uh, we hadn't stir fried any of it. I guess you could. Yeah. But the key to it is doing it when it's young. But uh, a lot of people call it Chinese okra. It had That's a little the reason different taste, but I liked it. We got it classified in the okra category. Next one oh, this is one. our new one. Yeah, this is one I want to talk about. Green fingers, which is a hybrid variety that produces small three to four inch green pods and is ideal for you guys out there that want to grow containers or patio garden. This is the okra for a container. I think I'm going to plant some of this mm -hmm. in a root pouch. Mm -hmm. It's about 15 inches tall, which is a foot and a half, which is unheard of for okra. And it'll continue to, to make it to a frost. It's a self-pollinator, so you ain't got to worry about having no bees, nothing like right there. But for growing on a balcony, or if you got small spaces, this is it. This would be a good conversational piece. Yeah. If you have friends and family over, you can show me okra. And you guys that's up north that want to try your hand at growing okra, that's going to be the way to do it right there. Mm. The container. Last. Mm -hmm. Best for last. Best for last. Jambalaya okra, which is a hybrid. And it's the most productive one out there. Now, we caught a little flat last year on some people on our group talking about jambalaya. And I'm going to try to clarify that just a little bit. Jambalaya okra makes a, makes a great pod that's kind of smaller normally than some of the rest of them. It has a dark green color to it. Probably a little greener than the rest of them. And the stalk normally starts making anywhere from two feet on up. Starts making yeah. pretty small. So the first couple times you cut it, you're going to have to bend over to do it. The problem with jambalaya okra is if it gets very long, it does get a little woody. It is the most productive okra that we have or we've ever seen hands down. If you don't want to grow a lot of okra, you don't need to grow the jambalaya because you've got to cut the jambalaya every other day. If you let it go beyond that, it's going to get woody on I've you. I've cut some in the mornings and skipped over some, and it was too big by the mm -hmm. afternoon. You want to cut the jambalaya no longer than that right there. As we used to call it, fancy is what jambalaya was, was known for a, a commercial variety to have that short okra there. So it's not very forgiving. If you want to wait three days to cut your okra, jambalaya is not the one. But if you want to grow a lot of okra and you like short okra, jambalaya is the okra. But don't confuse it with a cow horn because if it gets long, it's not going to be good. So the, we have nine varieties of okra. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Should be plenty there. Yep. All right. What's next? Well, I think it's time for corny joke of the week. Corny joke of the week. Speaking of okra, mm -hmm. what state grows the best okra? What state grows the best okra? I can't see where this is going. Georgia. No. I, I, I couldn't. I can't, it's the joke part, I can't figure it. Oklahoma. <laughs> All those okies out there. Oklahoma. 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 Yep. yep. Um, let me mention about the meet and greet in Alabama. It's in Jamison, Alabama, April the 23rd, 9 mm -hmm. to 5. There is a RSV, RSVP uh, link at the bottom if you're going so we can prepare. There's going to be seven YouTubers there. Hope we see you there. Yep. Got the Okie Homestead coming up, and uh, we're a sponsor of that. We're not going to be there, but some of our peeps will be there. So if you're there, go by on there and see some of our peeps. Uh, it's going to be March 19th for three days. It starts from March 19th, I'm assuming. All right, so now it is time for us to dig into last week's winner of the Old Goat I Found Look You. There are 60 people commented and found the Old Goat. And we're going to draw out of there, and what are we going to send them? We're going to send them this hat. Cool, the horse hat. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready? Yep. Mm. And the winner is Katrina White. Right there. So Katrina, send us in your address and we're going to send you one back. Send your address in to cussserve at hostools.com and we'll get you a hat in the mail. The highly coveted horse hat. Now, now comes the, the bean. Tell the us bean. about the bean Okay, again. the bean, this new bean we're really excited to have. We got it in inventory and it is live on the site. And what's so special about it? It is a heat set. So it's a nice straight bean, which we like. It's very consistent in pod size, but also the bush on it is very erect, so it doesn't fall over and it's hard to pick. It's easy to pick, very stand-up bush to it. The biggest thing about it, besides very consistent dark green pods, is it's a good, one of the best, if not the best ever, heat set. Actually, it will produce here in Georgia in June. Oh, wow. Which is unusual. Yeah, usually beans are gone by, by June. Gone by then, but this is going to give you... Now, this is this is not going to produce in July and August. Don't get me wrong. It's not... that None of them are. This is the best bean if you're planting late to have because of the heat set ability to it. It's a super, super variety that we're excited to have, and we're going to name it tonight. Today. So... We had how many submissions? Over 300. Yeah. Um, and so we took the list and everybody in the office, there's 15 mm -hmm. of us, picked our top three. Mm -hmm. And then we took the top of so four a lot of, of pressure, those top three. A lot of pressure on me. Because this is going to last for years and years as the host of the matter right here is. Okay, am I ready? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, right. Drum roll. Here it is. Hmm. <laughs> I like that one. Hoss Green Blaze. How about that? So that's the name that's of That's the name of our new bean, and we got it up and alive for you guys. All right, so just give a little insight. Besides the Hoss Green Blaze, okay. Hoss Green Blaze bean, we have a shipment in of some more cow peas and some beans that come in this week, too. So we got some new things arriving, and we can have more site. Rumor says we may have a little few zipper peas coming Oh. Yep. That's exciting. Okay, they always want to know what was the other runner-ups. Okay, this was one of the ones I picked. Hoss Heat Wave. I can't read backwards. Hoss Straight Heat. I don't like that one. And Hoss Summer Dream. I like that one too. Hoss Summer Dream. Hold that up so you can see it. Mine didn't make it. I like the uh, Hoss Hottie, but Hoss I got Hottie. overruled. You got cut out, did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. All right. All right, good deal. Thank y'all. Maybe we got you excited about growing some okra. If you've grown okra before, maybe you learned a little something. If you've never grown okra before, you probably need to try it. And with this new variety here of Mr. Green Fingers that you can grow in containers, you have no excuse why you can't grow okra this right. year. And if you like this show, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and put any comments down below if you have any questions we didn't cover today. Yep. Now it's time for you to get outside and get dirty.